Good day everyone. Welcome once again to Prayer Watch. Thank you for being with us today. Let us start with a prayer. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, we praise and we thank you for this wonderful time that you have given all of us to look into your word, to meditate upon them, and to ask in prayer to commune with you in our thoughts and meditations, and to lift up to you our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you will prepare our hearts and minds today. Forgive us, O God, our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Clear our minds and our hearts and help us receive your word with gladness, with joy, and with a commitment to follow you. We need your Holy Spirit, O oh God, to understand. We need your Holy Spirit to keep in step with your word day by day. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. John 16. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born she forgets the anguish because of her joy, that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. We Christians end our prayers invariably with the phrase, in Jesus' name. We have been taught by our parents, our elders, our pastors, spiritual leaders from childhood that this is the correct way to end our prayers. And that pattern finds its basis in what Jesus said according to John's Gospel that we have read, which in verse 26 says, Ask in my name. Some have sort of imbibed this expression from habit. Ah, minsan ito ay ginagamit natin pampaalis ng takot or pampatakot sa mga demonyo sinasabi natin in Jesus' name para mawala ang mga sinasabi nating mga kalaban in Jesus' name. Or sometimes it is even used as a vain expression kapag ang gusto sabihin ay Wag naman sana or never, kaya sinasabi natin, in Jesus' name. But what did Jesus mean when he said, ask in my name? Let's first understand the context. The apostle and the gospel writer, John, narrates in chapter 16 what Jesus taught them during his last couple of days on earth before he was arrested to be crucified on the cross. Jesus spoke in figurative language when he said that in a little while the disciples won't be seeing him anymore and then after a little while they will be seeing him again. He was actually referring to his imminent death which was going to be the following day after that preaching. And, uh, of course, assuming that their conversation was uh, held 
just before his arrest. But in a little while, or on the third day after his death, the disciples were going to see him again upon his resurrection. And true enough, the disciples could not have been more overjoyed than, that, than what happened that day when they saw the risen Christ. They were overwhelmed to the point of disbelief to see the first ever miracle of resurrection from the dead, never to die again as Jesus ascended to heaven after 40 days. He also used the figurative language of analogy comparing the pain of a woman in labor just before giving birth to her baby, but the eventual release of all pain as if it never happened after seeing the child born alive and well. So that is, uh, that gift, that uh, eventual result is much more than enough to, compen to compensate for all the pain and uh, the um, suffering, the anguish that preceded the birth of the child. Now, uh, applying this to the case of the disciples, true enough, that is obviously what happened to the disciples. Umiyak at tumangis ang mga alagad ni Jesus sa kanyang pagkamatay dahil ang akala nila ay nawala na sa kanila ang kanilang pinaka- Minamahal na guro ang kanilang um, tuluyang uh, pagkawala ng pag-asa. Akala nila talunan na ang kanilang pananampalataya at ang tingin nila na ang kalaban o ang sanlibutan ang siyang uh, nanalo o siya ang nanaig. At tuluyan nang nawala ang kanilang pinananampalatayaan. Subalit, nung nakita nila na nabuhay muli si Jesus, alam natin na nag-uumapaw ang kanilang kagalakan, ang kanilang kasiyahan, at hindi nila nakalimutan ang karanasan na iyon. Daladala nila yon hanggang sa huling hininga nila. At uh, ganoon na lamang ang, uh, ang kanilang kagalakan, at ganoon na lamang ang kanilang pananampalataya, at ang tibay ng kanilang uh, uh, pagtitiwala sa kanila, sa Panginoong Yesus, na kasama ng banal na espiritu at sa kapangyarihan na espiritu na iyon, na nanahan sa kanilang mga puso, walang nakapagpigil sa kanilang pagbabahagi ng Ebanghelyo. At sa abot ng kanilang mga paa at lakas, kanilang itinuro ang lahat ng uh, mga ipinagbilin sa kanila ng Panginoon. Hindi nila ininda ang iba't ibang uri ng pag-uusig, ng paghihirap at kahit kamatayan, maipamahagi lamang nila ang lahat ng kanilang naging karanasan ang katuruan at ang kanilang nasaksihan tungkol sa Panginoong Hesus na siyang tagapagligtas at Panginoon. The disciples taught as much as they could remember of Jesus' teachings and shared their unique experience with him and the miracles that validated his claims of being God, the Son of God, God incarnate. Truly, when Jesus' love and spirit is in your being, joy abounds even in the severest of trials. Ito ang kakaibang karanasan ng alagad ni Jesus noon, at gayon din naman ngayon sa ating mga karanasan. Hindi maintindihan ng mga taong wala kay Yesus, subalit isang katotohanan hindi maikakaila ng mga nasa Kanya. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Doon ang sinabi ng Panginoon. The unspeakable joy that the resurrection brought to the disciples had answered their doubts, uh, had, um, or rather had answered their questions, banished their doubts, and uh, all of that in one sweep. What did Jesus mean when he repeatedly told them that he will rise again? The disciples 
probably did not understand that, that that truth did not sink in in their minds, but upon seeing with their own eyes, touching him with their own hands, hearing Jesus' voice with their own ears, and having spent many more days of communion with him during the 40 days that he stayed after his resurrection, the disciples had nothing more to ask from Jesus. And that is why Jesus said, in that day you will not ask me anything. You will no longer ask me anything because these things that uh, he has told them even before will now be made clear and understandable. And then we proceed. Jesus zeroes in on the teaching about asking the Father in his name. Verse 23 of John 16 says, In that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. And in verse 26, he goes on to say, In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. Jesus said that in that day, meaning in that day when they see him resurrected, they will be praying in a way that they have not prayed until then. They will ask the Father in Jesus' name. Hihingi sila sa Ama sa pangalan ni Jesus. Ano ang kahulugan nito at ano ang implikasyon nito? Let me share with you two uh, most fundamental meanings and implications. First is access to the Father's presence and in prayer is open like never before. Abot kamay ang Ama sa langit na makausap at mapanalanginan ng higit kailan paman. Jesus paid the way for believers to have direct access to God the Father's presence, direct access in prayer, access to an unhampered relationship with God as Father in heaven. That was not the case before. Not before Jesus' resurrection. So in Jesus' name means because of Jesus' atoning sacrifice on the cross, He has indeed completed the work of being the mediator between God and believers. He has paved the way for us. Indeed, He is the way, the truth, the light. He has opened heaven's gate, so to speak, for us to enter God's presence in prayer even while we are yet here on earth. In Jesus' name declares that we have access to God the Father by our sheer identity as His children. To anyone, to everyone to who has believed in His name, in Jesus' name, God the Father has given the right to be called children, His children, and we have and unhampered access to God in our prayers. So when Jesus said, Ask in my name, and my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name, it means the way is open, clear, and wide for you to approach God the Father because Jesus has cleared it for you and for me by by way of His death and resurrection. Wala nang sagabal sa ating pagpunta ng diretsyo sa Panginoon, sa Ama sa Langit. The lesson here is about the clear access to God, the Father. I believe it does not mean that just because Jesus Christ has given us free access to God the Father, it necessarily follows that each and every supplication and prayer will be granted by God just as we, just as we ask it. No? Access is different from answer. 
because we know that as a whole, Scripture does not guarantee a positive answer to each and every item that we pray for now. Our experience as Christians also does not validate such a claim. All our prayers are still subject to the sovereign will and pleasure of God in His way, in His time. Kaya huwag natin isipin na dahil sinabi na natin sa ating prayers in Jesus' name, o dahil tayo ay anak ng Diyos at taimtim ang ating paniniwala at panalangin ay ibibigay ng Diyos ang bawat kahilingan sa paraang gusto natin. No? We cannot use this particular teaching Ask anything in my name and my Father will give it to you in that sense. No? Maraming mga totoong kristyanong humiling na palawigin no? o pagalingin ang kanilang mga mahal sa buhay, ngunit ang pasya ng Diyos ay kunin na. Kunin na sila. Hindi po ba? Ito ay katunayan na hindi lahat na ating kahilingan ay ipagkakaloob ng Diyos kahit pa tayo ay anak niya at kahit pa walang imposible sa Kanya. All possibility ends where God's sovereignty begins. Ang mahalagang maalala natin ay in Jesus' name means that God's uh, the act has been opened wide and clear like never before. Wala nang sagabal dahil sa ginawa na ating Panginoong Jesus sa krus. Secondly, is this, God loves and listens to believers just as He loved and listened to Jesus' prayers. Kung papaanong mahal ng Diyos Ama si Jesus at pinakinggan ang kanyang mga panalangin, gayon din ang kanyang pag-ibig at pakikinig sa panalangin natin na kanyang mga anak. No? This is an awesome teaching from Jesus. He is saying here, He does not need to ask God the Father on our behalf. He said, I am not asking that, I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father Himself loves you. Dahil tayo ay tinuring na tunay na anak ng Diyos dahil sa handog ni Jesus na kanyang sakripisyo, na kanyang buhay sa krus, na kapalit ng ating mga kasalanan, hindi na raw niya kailangan pang mamagitan sa ating mga panalangin. No? Diretso na ang panalangin sa ating Diyos Ama. God loved us even while we were sinners, even while we were not, we have not yet received Jesus Christ. In fact, it was His love that caused Him to send Jesus Christ into the world to save us. As John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. How much more now that we have believed and received Jesus Christ and are saved, will He not open His heart to us and commune with us? So, wag po natin iisipin na mas maliit ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon sa atin kaysa sa sabi. Ito ang ito ang um, Katiyakan na ibinigay ni Jesus sa atin. No, I am not going to ask the Father on your behalf because the Father Himself loves you. Kayo ay ganun din, ganun din ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon kung papaano ako inibig, sabi ni Jesus, ng Ama, ay ganun din naman ang, kanilang, ang kanyang pag-ibig sa inyo in that day. Malalaman nyo yan. And so at the same time that we approach God in humility, we can approach Him with confidence in His loving kindness towards us. When we pray in Jesus' name, we are saying, we are sort of asserting, we are, we are um, confirming in our hearts that we are His children whom He loves and listens to just as He loved and listened to His one and only Son, Jesus Christ. 
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, isn't it such an enormous privilege and joy to be able to pray to the Father in Jesus' name? That is with a wide, open, and clear access to God, to His throne of grace and mercy, and to know that He considers us with such love and attention as that which He accorded Jesus Christ in all His prayers. So, let us come and draw closer to God in prayer every day and in every season of life. Our prayer time could be the most comforting, the most encouraging, the most inspiring, the most deeply joyful and satisfying times of our day and of our lives. Lumapit tayo palagi sa Panginoon at huwag nating palampasin ang bawat araw na hindi natin nakakausap ng masinsinan ang ating dakilang Diyos, Ama sa Langit, manlilikha at tanggulan sa bawat panahon, sa bawat araw ng ating buong buhay. Let us pray. Our Father in Heaven, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this word that you have revealed to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you indeed, O Lord God, for your love for us. Such great love that you sent Jesus Christ into the world to finish the work of salvation. And for us who believe, you have opened wide the way to your throne of grace and mercy. Father, thank you for reminding us that how, how many times we have lost our joy, lost hope, and lost faith because we have forgotten the gift of prayer. We have forgotten, O oh Lord, what it means to come to you in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that each and every one of us who have uh, listened to your word today, who have looked into your word, read it, meditated upon it, and received such an understanding through the Holy Spirit, will start a new chapter of prayer life and there begin to know and experience the wonder, the beauty, and the joy of talking to you moment by moment. Father, please listen to the prayers of your children now whose hearts are bowed before you. Father, we trust you. We trust your high, inscrutable ways, the best that you have for us. And so, Lord, we want to be able to listen to you as we pray. And also in prayer, receive your answer, understand your ways, and love you even more. Panginoon, gusto lang po namin talagang lumapit sa inyo, mapalapit sa inyo, o Diyos, dahil kayo ang aming ama na mapagmahal na nasa langit. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, dahil simula ngayon ay pananatilihin namin sa aming puso at isipan ang maganda at di malirip na relasyon na nasa atin, sa amin ngayon, sa inyo, sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your great love that we can go directly to you. Your access is within our reach. Certainly. Marami marami pong salamat. At sa lahat ng aming mga panalangin ngayon o Diyos, para sa inyong kalinga, sa inyong pagpapagaling, kalusugan, uh, karunungan, uh, kapanatagan, kapayapaan, at pagpuno ng lahat ng pangangailangan. Yes, Lord, hinihiling namin ito lahat sa ngala ni Jesus. Alam namin na malinis ang daan patulong sa inyo. 
Alam namin, Panginoon, na lubos ang inyong pag-ibig na kayo ay nakikinig at kayo ay tumutugon ng paraan na higit pa kaysa aming naiisip o inaasahan. Sa ngala ni Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord for His wonderful words of life and may God truly enrich all our prayer times with Him. Please join us again next week. Goodbye.